Space has been further shrunk down, old scale, 1 to 1 million, new scale, 1 to 50 million. The Sun and Saturn should now appear to be 50 times smaller than they did a minute ago. It's a little bit hard to tell, um, but I, I definitely think that Saturn and Jupiter look quite a lot smaller. They look like they could fit in my room now, whereas before they were building-sized. So they are quite a lot smaller. The Sun, also quite a lot smaller, still ridiculously huge, but that's fine. What are we going to do now? Oh, hi there. Whoa! Okay, that's big. Pollux, orange giant in constellation Gemini. Volume, 2854 suns. And the sun is like millions of Earths, and you are... And you are thousands of suns. Whoa. Okay, that's pretty big, guys. You could, like, swallow our sun up like a snack. Power output, 43 suns. Age, 724 million. Oh, you're young. Our sun's way older than you. You should respect your yellow elders. Distance from the sun, 34 light years. That's cool. Um, any more to learn about it? In the sky above you to the left, Pollux's position has been circled in orange. Really? Where? Oh, hi there. Hey, Pollux. I didn't know these were real stars that were around us. So that's showing us where Pollux is in the sky. That's so cool. All right, let's keep going. Oh boy. This is going to be even bigger, isn't it? Oh my god, Pollux, I feel like it's going to like envelop me. It's so huge. I feel like I could spend like hours just walking around it. You are a big, big sun. Pollux is confirmed to have a planet orbiting it. That planet is at least 2.3 times the mass of Jupiter. Man, you got your own... You're a bigger sun, you got bigger planets. You're just making everything look big. Alright, where are we going next? Whoa, okay. We did not need to get even bigger. Hi, Rigel. Oh, you're a giant blue sun. Look at this. Wait, where'd the other suns go? There they are. Pollux and... Wow. wow. And our, our own sun is just this little circle over there now. Wow. Okay, Rigel. Blue-white supergiant. Brightest star in constellation Orion. 1.7 million suns. So our sun is millions of Earths. This sun is millions of suns, so that's trillions? Yeah, trillions of Earths. That's a lot of Earths. Power output, 126,000 suns, 8 million years old. These young guys are always bigger and more powerful. Distance from the sun, 860 light years. Well, I'm glad anything this big and powerful is very far away from me. To your left, Rigel's position has been circled in blue. Oh, hey, Rigel. I can see you. You are bright. Even from here, you look bright. Over there is Pollux. And there's Rigel. And yeah, I can see that's Orion. You can see the belt. Let's zoom in. Ah, the stars zoom in. disappear when you zoom in. I forgot about that. All right, so yeah, there's Orion's belt. You can see those three stars lined up there. And, and that's Rigel, the super bright star, circled in blue. Pretty cool. Let's keep going. What could be bigger than this? That could be bigger. That could be... Oh my god. This is unnecessary. I know I've done this part before, but every time I see Vicanus Majoris pop up like this, it is... I feel like it's just going to knock me out of my seat. It's so huge. So ridiculously enormous. This is where the real emotional impact of this demo comes in, where you see things and you're like, well, that's huge. And then you see things, you're like, well, that's even huger. And then it's like, whoosh. This is the biggest thing you've ever seen in your life, isn't it? And that's 
That's the feeling they want to give you. They want to give you the sense of how ridiculously huge the sun is. And they do that so effectively. Red Hypergiant. One of the largest known stars in our galaxy. 12 billion suns would fit inside it. And it has the power output of 270,000 suns. And is 10 million years old. And it's 4,000 light years from home. Wow. If you look to your left, you can see Vicanus Majoris is positioned in the sky, circled in red. However, it's usually too difficult to see with the naked eye. Probably because it's so far away. It's 4,000 light years away, wasn't it? Yeah, 4,000 light years away. Even though it's this ridiculously huge, it's just, it's just too far away. Vicanus Majoris is nearing the end of its life and is expected to explode in the next 100,000 years, leaving behind a black hole. Well, it's like they say, only the good die young. Living for 10 million years. Our sons live for billions of years. You live for 10 million years, and then you're just going to explode and become a black hole. It's going out of style. Vicanus Majoris. All right. Keep going. Oh my god. We're getting so close to it. I don't wanna I don't wanna get this close to it. I don't like this color. I don't like the size. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm floating over like the surface of the earth now. It, it looks flat from here. It's so huge that it looks flat. Whoa. Whoa. So big. Oh, hey, Rigel. Whoa. And here they are, all compared. And the sun, Pollux, Rigel, Vicanus Majoris. I believe in the original, um, in the original Titans of Space, they did not change the scale when they went into the sun part. So you didn't have as much appreciation for the real sizes of these things. But it is so apparent right here. Seeing Vicanus Majoris behind them all and still surrounding them all. And they're all kind of in your stereoscopic view. And it's just so, so apparent how big these sizes are. And there are the planets down there and they're so tiny. You can see them, but they're tiny. You can barely see Earth. Earth is like a pixel. Even inside, D like on DK1, like you couldn't see any of that stuff down there. It was too pixelated. But here, I can still see Earth. It's like one pixel. And Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune, I can see because they're bigger. The inner planets, they're all just like tiny little specks of dust. Wow. Okay. Where are we going now? Oh, bye, Rigel. Are you going to leave? Whoa, whoa, no, 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 I don't want the sun to be that close to Vicanus Majoris. Oh my god, look at this. The sun is like a beach ball on the surface of the earth next to Vicanus Majoris. I'm exaggerating, but it is so small. Wow, wow, wow. I like how they do the text billboarded so that I can look up at it here and still read it clearly. Anyway, let's go on to the next part. What's coming next? Are we going to leave Vicanus Majoris behind? Getting closer to the sun here. What are we doing? What's happening? I don't know if this part's going to be the same as the original or not. Hey, sun. The universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, it seems like an awful waste of space. Carl Sagan. Pretty big. Pretty fucking big indeed. There's little Earth. Earth is so tiny now at this scale. The moon is like a ping pong ball. And the Earth is like, like, not even a basketball. 
It's like a grapefruit. So little. And there's Ceres, just hanging out. There's Mars. Mars is super tiny. Mercury is like the size of a lime, I want to say. They're all tiny. So tiny. All right, let's keep going. Solar system distances are expanding. What's happening? Oh, we're getting so far away. Sun, sun, come back. Sun, where are you going? And the moon, and the Earth and the moon are getting far apart. And here we are. Earth's actual orbit, 150 kilometers away from the sun. 150 million kilometers, you know what I mean. So there's Earth, super tiny. There's the sun in the distance. It makes sense we would still be able to see the sun clearly from Earth, because in real life we actually can see the sun clearly, but it doesn't fill up that much of the sky. There's the moon. I can see the moon, but it's tiny. I can barely see it. Even if I zoom in on it, it's pretty tiny. What you doing, moon? And you know, I understand once they expand the distances why lunar eclipses are so rare. Because like seriously, what's the chance that that thing is going to come directly between us and the sun? Moving like this. Pretty slim chance. Most of the time it's just going to miss it. All right, let's get out of here. We're going above the solar system, guys. Here we are. There are the orbits of the planets to scale. We can no longer see any of the planets because the scale has now become so ridiculously huge. There's Mercury and the sun. You can barely, barely see the sun in the middle. I think it's like less than a pixel wide. Can I zoom in on it? I see you, sun. I know you're there. So tiny, so tiny. And the sun is enormous, and like yet at this scale of actual space distances, it still looks ridiculously tiny. That is how far apart shit is. All right, let's keep going. Here is Pollux, placed at the center of our solar system. Oh, hey, Pollux. Yeah, I can see you a bit more clearly. You're like five pixels wide instead of one pixel wide. No harm done, except all life would burn up and planetary orbits would be sent into chaos. Oops. All right. Here is Rigel. If it were placed at the center of our solar system, it would immediately engulf Mercury, and with a mass of 18 suns, would quickly draw all planets into the star. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't even look that big. It's like it's barely going out to Mercury's orbit, but it's, it's still massive enough that all these planets that are orbiting around are just going to get sucked right in. Finally. I can't holy shit no no bad oh my god let's let's try and avoid this ever happening I I don't want to be consumed by Vicanus Majoris you are a monster this star is a monster finally if Vicanus Majoris were placed at the center of our solar system the star would likely reach as far as Saturn I think Pluto would be alright. Probably not. I think everybody would be dead. Every single little piece of rock in the solar system would be sucked right in. Autopilot offline. Loss of control. Wax melted. It's full of stars. Oh god. What's happening? Warning. This is bad. Guys. 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 This wasn't part of the plan. I'm not learning. No. And that's the end. <laughs> that's Titans of Space. We're done. That was the full tour. So if you've stuck around to watch every part of this video, I am very happy that you did. 
I'm glad you got to see all the cool things in Titans of Space. You definitely, when you get your hands on a rift, need to check out the full tour for yourself. Just watching someone else do it is not the same as being there and being in the presence of those massive, massive celestial bodies. I recognize you. You're... I want to say Europa? I think? One of those ice moons. Yeah. Okay. And there's... It's... It's super educational. They keep adding more text. And, you know, you might think reading text is boring, but, like, doing it in context when you're looking right at it and seeing it right next to other things, you get this incredibly strong visceral impression for how big things are relative to each other. And, you know, that by itself is kind of the key thing of Titans of Space. But there's so many other things you learn in the process, like just random cool facts while you're wandering around the solar system. And, 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 um, uh, Drash, incidentally, says that um, they are planning to make um, more space-related demos. I'm going to show you. Um, let's go back to our main menu. How do I get to the main menu? Okay, that just reset my view. I don't want to quit yet. No, that's fine. So, Drash is planning to make more space-related demos. Um, nothing is solid yet in exactly what Drash is going to do. But if you want to support any of those future efforts, you can visit the Titans of Space webpage, and you can use the donation button to send a small portion of money. If you enjoy Titans of Space, you should totally donate, like five, ten dollars, as a way of thanking Drash for making this great, wonderful experience. And um, and additionally, whenever Drash gets around to making new space experiences, you will get that for free. Uh, you will get a 100% discount just because you donated some money, any amount you want to donate. So go and do that if you like Titans of Space. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm still I'm still in awe of this demo. DK2's made it so much better because it feels more comfortable and everything is more readable and more clear. You can see so much more detail on the planets and those textures. You can lean around the small planets and see them from every side, and and you can like look out of your cockpit and look down at like the edge of the sun, and and just there's there's so much to play with there's so much to explore even though it's all an on rails experience still i think a very moving and emotional experience the, the sheer impact that those sizes can have on you even though it's you know it's just a tour of some spheres the, the fact that it's based in reality and that like these spheres are things that are really out there that somewhere 4000 light years away there's this giant fucking sun that's like was so big that if it put in our solar system it would like engulf jupiter that is ridiculous it's it's hard to grasp to imagine but this starts to give you just a, this just starts to give you a feeling for the sheer scope of things out there in space and i i think that's what makes it such a compelling demo and i hope that virtual reality i hope this isn't just a one-off example of how virtual reality can help you understand size i hope that there's going to be tons of things that you're going to be able to get an intuitive understanding for by directly observing and experiencing them in a virtual reality setting and having them be all around you and having them be presented to you in this very personal, very close-up manner. Anyway, that is all for today. Let me know any thoughts you have on Titans of Space. Let me know any other demos you want to see. And um, as a reminder, this weekend, um, this weekend I am going to be doing um, my... Saturday, um, sorry, at Saturday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be doing my Minecraft live stream to celebrate 50,000, not 50, to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. I'm losing track of my mind here. Uh, to celebrate 5,000 subscribers, and we're going to play around in Minecraft. I'm going to be live streaming on Twitch. It's going to be a lot of fun, so hopefully I'll see you there. That is all for today, and everybody have a great every day.